Hello friends, welcome to this PowerPoint presentation of the importance of having a friend's website and keeping it updated. I'm Judy Hills, the president of the Friends of the North Carolina Public Libraries, and I'm going to be doing your presentation today. Why do I bring this topic up? In 2021, Friends of the North Carolina Public Libraries conducted extensive research to identify existing friends group in the state. We were really appalled at the difficulty we had in obtaining the most basic information. Uh, the person who was doing this research quipped, I guess they don't want to be found. We were also appalled at the number of friends with no email contacts listed. They made it very difficult to locate the information. Sometimes we could only find it by digging around and accessing a membership application. Some friends' websites were merely a single page on the library's website. Existing website and web page lacked any real information providing transparency, such as bylaws, budgets, annual reports, a plan of work, projects or programs that they were involved in, pretty much a very sterile web pages. Interested public needs information about your mission, your leaders, your plan of work, etc. Otherwise, how are you going to attract new members, especially younger members, to your organization? So what's the purpose of a website for friends? It broadens your reach. You've got to get the information about yourselves out into the general community and certainly a website is the way to do it in today's environment. It attracts and engages new members and new donors. If they can't find you, they're not going to give you anything. They're not going to support you. They're not going to engage. They're not going to be members if they can't find you. It helps build a relationship with potential advocates and other nonprofits with aligned missions and volunteers. When they're looking for information for, let's say, a partner for a grant or an opportunity that they have, uh, they need to be able to find it online. It builds a case for your legitimacy and your reputation by providing transparency. It's a very important feature and function of a website. Nonprofits, and that's friends, you're all nonprofits, succeed or fail on the strength of your ability to communicate your message and build your audience. And a website helps to achieve both of those goals. And it also makes your friends group appear approachable. Otherwise, it looks like you're hiding for some reason. Independent charity analysis companies use your website to evaluate your performances. So that's another reason you want your information out there. So why should you have your own, web, your own website? If your web page is part of the library's website, they have control of it. You do not. It's more difficult and cumbersome to get any needed changes. You know, you have to submit it maybe to the library website manager. This individual may have lots of other requests that are going to take precedence over yours, and you might have to wait a long time to get those changes actually made on your web page on the library's website. Changes might not be made in a timely manner. Again, you might not be a priority. The library may or may not agree with the content you wish to post. You know, that's, the, that's their call. It's their website. The library's website may have limited space and might not want to share it with friends. In other words, let's say you'd like to post a lot of pictures, but they only have a limited amount of um, capability on that website, and that might eat up too much space. The library may have policy, website policies that are too stringent for the needs of friends. You do not have your own URL, which is part of your identity. And the public may be, have difficulty finding your page using search engines. So you might say, hey, we have a Facebook page. What do we need with a website? Well, the Facebook pages cons are you don't really have a whole lot of control and the Facebook sets the designs. There could be there could be distractions, uh, irrelevant posts, limited ability to post relevant material, and there could be privacy breaches. Some pros for the website is you have control of the look, feel, and content. You have the ability to add more content and archive data. 
and there's multiple contact channels in other words how the public would get would get in touch with you if they choose to what scary website does it, mistakes do nonprofits make well your website doesn't have any con real contact information on there your website might lack details of your nonprofit's mission and vision. Your website doesn't feature your nonprofit's latest news. Keeping up to date on your websites is so essential. I can't tell you how disheartening it is to me, who's a constant user of web websites, how difficult it is to find the latest information for a particular group. Your website navigation doesn't make sense. Your website isn't mobile friendly. Let's say it looks your website looks fine when you open it up on your home screen, computer screen, but if you're trying to look at something on your phone, it gets very skewed. So having a, a system, a website that is friendly with your phone is important in today's society. Your website doesn't have a clear ask for donations. That's something very essential. If that's part of, you know, you need money for your operations, then they need to know that they can, hey, click here and donate. Easy peasy. Your website doesn't have the social media links of the newsletter sign up. Your website content uses too many words to demonstrate your work. You should use a lot of pictures and fewer words. And it doesn't feature endorsements or third party reviews. So those are some mistakes according to experts on websites. So what are the elements of a strong friends website? Well, we have you have a name, a logo, a location identified. Your organization and board contact information is there so that if they want to connect with the president or the membership chair, they know who those people are and by one click they can actually uh, get an, an email to that individual. Email addresses are a must in today's society and we're just amazed at how many uh, even members of our own group uh, that send their membership information in that don't ha still don't have we email addresses. And don't be afraid to use them. Yeah, you're going to get spam occasionally, but if you'll just take the time to look at the email address of the person who's sending you the email to, you know, request funds for, you know, some project in South Africa, uh, do look at that and you can tell immediately that it is not from a legitimate source. Mission statement, you need to say what you're about. Details on what matters to you, your, prog your programs, your projects. Uh, you could have a blog or a news section to keep people appraised of your activities. It's not necessary that you have every one of these elements, but you can work toward them. A calendar of events, what's coming up and when, that is important. A headshots and bios of your officers and directors make you seem user friendly. People can go on there and say, oh yeah, I know Jane, you know, she's, she belongs to so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. Hey, she's a good person. I think I might be interested in joining that organization. Use compelling imagery throughout the site. So what are the elements, some more elements of a strong friend's website? You want to have storage of key documents like archiving newsletters, have your bylaws, your budget, your plan of work, your current financial um, financials on there, your annual reports. Uh, ways to join, you know, can you print out a hard copy of the membership application you can fill out by hand and mail in? Or can you actually uh, do an online PDF fillable form and print it out and send it in? Or can I just click and say, I want to join and you can use a credit card? How easy or hard are we making it for people to actually join our organization? And do you have the ability to, kept, to accept cash donations online, you know, PayPal or you know, whatever. Um, what do you have information on your book donations and sales? You know, if you do book sales, then how, you know, tell the public what you need to, what they need to do, how they can donate books, when and where to buy. Uh, a list of what is needed by the organization. If you, you know, you're running special projects and let's say you're doing um, 
Christmas stockings for children at, you know, uh, an underprivileged uh, group and maybe a housing project and you need candy or, you know, small books or small items for the stockings, um, that's the place where you would list it. <clears throat> Links to the main uh, library and branches any and other pertinent sites. And then a call to action. Hey, click here to sign up for the newspaper, click here to volunteer, click here to donate, click here to support, click here to join. You know, really give them the ability to take action. And how do you build a, a friend's website, your own friend's website? Well, you could do it yourself using a member or volunteer and, you know, you don't have to be that tech savvy anymore. There's so many good programs out there these days that are very intuitive and it's not that difficult. So if you have someone knowledgeable that has have done their own website or working on another website, they may be able to do it. You could pay a student to do it uh, you could, or you could pay a professional to do it. You want to choose your platform, some simple uh, intuitive program. An example is WordPress. Many people are using WordPress. It's not the only one out there, but it's an example of one that's simple to use. And don't let the professional talk you into any complicated platform. It's got to be simple so that you can make your own changes to it. You make it too hard and you're not going to get anybody that's going to want to manage it. You want to make sure you register your domain name and your, your site sets, your site's URL, and keep it updated or you're going to lose it. I've seen examples where uh, I would click on somebody's website's URL and I would go to the thing that says, this site is available, which means that they let it go. They didn't pay their money. Somebody wasn't keeping up with it. So GoDaddy is a good example of a registry, but there are others, and you should look for the ICANN accredited. That's a, the group that coordinates the URL assignments. Um, I'm not going to go into this too deeply, but just to say that, you know, any Tom, Dick, and Harry can't go out there and collect money to register a domain name, so make sure you're working through an accredited group. You want to select the hosting plan that's needed for backup security, the ability to make payments online or donations online. Um, some hosting plans will provide email accounts as well. WordPress uh, is, recommends Bluehost as one of the hosting plans, but again, there are a lot of them out there. They're not free, but they're not expensive either. You want to pick out a theme to fit the image you want of the project. You can create from scratch or you can choose a platform that has many, many have templates that you can use. You want to build your site's basic pages, add a donation plugin, such as here, donate with PayPal, and optimize your website for the search engines. Um, that's all, a lot of that is built into the programs, um, or if you're working with a designer, you can make sure they do that. And there's a couple of links here. If you're watching via YouTube, you're not going to be able to access those. But if you go to our website, you can just access the PowerPoint itself, and you'll be able to click on these links on that, on the website. So what comes next? You need to get a member to agree to do the website content updates, including contact information, event calendar, news, current newsletters, reports, anything else you need and want to post. Uh, the webmaster to regularly update the platform security and the plugins. Um, you need to work with the treasurer so the fees for the domain and the hosting are paid on time. Keep changing the home page so the visitors return. You don't want it to get stale looking you know, change out the cover picture or do something to make the home page a little more appealing. And review your website metrics if you set those up and use them to make decisions on your page. Uh, I There's a web press site that I maintain for, for another type of organization. Uh, here is an example of the number of uh, sessions. It's a very small group, so it's not surprising that the most hits I ever had in one day on uh, on the website was seven. So, and those probably five of those were mine when I was checking something. But at any rate, you can you can get analytics like this that will tell you uh, how many people are checking out your website. 
So you want to publish your URL in your newsletter each time and on all printed material that you put out, your flyers, your business cards, your letterheads, whatever. Ask the board members to visit the site frequently and report any issues such as broken links, problems with the site loading, uh, if it's not being viewed properly on the smartphone. You should be you should be catching these things before the public does. So work together to accomplish that. And at least once a year, the designated webmaster or someone should check all the links on the website to make sure that they are still uh, active and uh, are um, good. And then the most important thing, again, is keeping that website updated. We can't say that enough. So here are some examples of friends website they might not contain all the elements of a great website but they are a good start you've got to start somewhere you can always get better but if you've got to start these again these links will be on our website on the uh, pdf of the powerpoint you can access it on youtube and so um, everyone starts their journeys these days online so your online presence is important it's important to have your very own website with your own URL. We can't say that enough, so we really hope that you will consider having your own website. It's not that difficult, it's not that expensive, and we truly hope that you will take the time to consider this. Thank you for listening today, and good luck.